It's Bigfoot Collectors Club. With Bryce and Michael. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Bigfoot Collectors Club, the show where we talk to amazing guests about their personal paranormal history and share stories of high strangeness. I'm your host, Michael McMillan. With me always is your other host, Bryce Johnson. And missing for another week in a row (laughs) is one Riley Bray. Yeah, but we got his girlfriend, so that's better. (laughs) Hi, Are you just qualifying her as girlfriend? Yeah, seriously, yeah, well, man. Come what, on, 2019. Come on, she's what am I, a music artist. I'm a, she's oh, a strong woman. Oh, right. God, she's an right. independent, non-binary I'm individual. Getting, right. Jesus, <laughs> always getting busted in here. I can't. I can never say the right thing, as you'll uh, soon learn. Filling in on the engineering and on mic producing is our dear friend Grace Mitchell. Grace, Hi. how you doing? I'm doing good. How's the world of Music. It's um, musical. I have to say, you're looking very Riley today. I. You've got yeah, like. It's kind of embarrassing. You kind of look I like would, a bigfoot no, like hunter or a lumberjack yeah, right fully, now. Yeah, I just came out of the woods, so yeah. You were Literally. on. You you're were on, on a boat this yeah, weekend, weren't you? Yeah, we went up to. Um, we went up to the mountains of up above Fresno, and we did some canoeing, and it was very uh, bigfoot esque up there. Love that. So Ooh. I'm still feeling the vibes. What were the you guys doing? Vibes. Um, it's a long story, but it is why Riley's not here. Basically, I had to go save him from, uh, I had to do a rescue mission, um, because his band broke down when he was on tour with his band wow. in Fresno. So I went and picked him up and, um. This already sounds like the setup of the Indiana Jones adventure in Disneyland. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like exactly. Riley went yeah. missing yeah, yeah, in the yeah, Lost yeah. Temple and you had to go find him. Basically. So, so I went and picked him up and I helped them finish their tour and, and then, um, he has to stay there and get the van fixed. So oh, I boy. came back and now I'm here. Well, we love yeah. that you're here. Yep. Yay. We hope you join us. As Riley would on the yes. show. Yes, yeah, I'm gonna have to like drop my my voice like 10 dB lower in Smooth order to caramel. be like him. Yeah, exactly. Smooth you got you got a nice voice. You got a great voice. Um, and we have an even better guest today. Not not of I mean not better right. than you. I'm just saying right. even I know better than meant, a caramel Michael. voice. Michael, you, no no more. Okay. Oof. I'm stop tough. right there. Lost it. First Bryce um, and now Michael. I know. I know. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> um, today's guest is an actor, writer, comedic performer, and filmmaker. She created the hilarious Bajillion Dollar Properties, which recently dropped its fourth season. And she wrote and directed the autobiographical documentary Origin Story, which is streaming now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show Kulap Vilaisa. Yay! Hi. Hello, hello. Hi. I'm I, so happy to be here. I'm so happy that you're here. When uh, I put together this little show with Bryce, and I made a list of guests, you were on. You were one of the first people <gasps> I thought of that I wanted to get on this show, and uh, uh-huh. we're so happy to finally have you have Thank you here. You. How, how have you here? Um, <laughs> congratulations on Origin Story. I watched it this weekend. It's oh wow! Brilliant, so moving. You you know a lot about me now. I do. <laughs> I know that that's like a whole other podcast too. Because the one thing it didn't answer. Personal paranormal history, which we'll get to. I was watching that whole movie being like, oh boy, it's going to seem real trivial if I ask her about ghosts now. It won't. It won't. Lao people are very, we believe in ghosts. We're superstitious. It is everyone. We yes, so uh, this is. I'm so excited to talk about whatever you want. Oh, great! Oh, fantastic! Great, great, great. Cryptozoology into it. Yeah, great. lost civilizations into it. Yes, ghost experiences got oh, them. Oh, 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 you're perfect. Then. Occult, yeah. yes. Yes. Oh, I love the what's occult. going on with the ma- like the ma- like the- cult masonry. Uh, I love uh, Rosicru- 
Rosicrucianism. Or, thank you. Yeah. There's, I, I like weird alchemy. Stuff. How, I'm yeah. interested in alchemy. Uh, yes. <laughs> and t- let's pull it back into origin story. I turned my shit into gold. You yes. yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll alchemy. T- I'll tell you what else about that movie. Don't think I didn't notice that amazing graphic novel shelf you have in your home. Yes. Oh boy, oh boy, did I get jealous. I was like, that's what I want. Just a beautiful little room. It's like a walk-in closet that is just just comic books. Oh. Just wow. So Feelings. for those who don't know, what is Origin? I, I'm, I haven't seen it or I'm familiar with it. I really it. like Please. the way you're wearing your headphones today, by the way. It's you're really, really cool. Oh, DJ thanks. Mode. Well, I was going to say DJ Jazzy Jeff. In right. it. They're a little hot and I don't want to like, you know, ask Grace to turn oh, them boy, down because oh, oh, it, it's, no, it's, no, oh, it's all good. He's got some no, hot cans, I'm, Grace. It's all good. Grace, yeah, I have no faith cans in me. What is no. this? <laughs> I think you're the best thing that's ever happened to us, Grace. Steamy cans. Uh, I got steamy cans. Hot, what steamy am I buns do? on my ears. No, you're good. I'm totally good. Don't worry about Those it. Those are cinnamon rolls. <laughs> Just so. Cina- two cinnabons on Bryce's ears. Oh, my God. <laughs> too hot. Mm. Too hot and sticky. Getting hot frosting oh in my, my eardrums. <laughs> Um, so for those of us who don't know, it um, is a documentary. Yes, wherein I explore my origin story. No way. Yes, I found out when I was fourteen that my dad wasn't my real dad in a really, really awful way, and then I proceeded to bury it until I was about thirty-three. Right. Yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you're originally from from uh, Kansas. Yeah. Or. I you grew like, up in what yeah. Minnesota? Minnesota. Let's deal with this later. But of course, things don't stay buried. And then when you try to uh, dig them up, uh, right. there was a reason why they were buried. Oh, wild! Oh, wow. um, so I go and I meet my father in Laos. But really, it's about having kind of an understanding of my relationship with my mother, which is very problematic, and also uh, a relationship with myself. Incredible! Basically. And it's, where can we find this? You can find it streaming. Uh, Amazon Prime and also on I on iTunes, Apple Plus. What is it called now? Oh my god! Do we know? I watched it on Amazon Prime. Okay, great. I have so. to watch. I, I mean, documentaries are my steez. I absolutely love them. And then uh, the uh, the idea alone, what steez? I love it. My I love the oh, steez. Your headphones. Something. It's just like you're giving me such strong nineties right now. <laughs> you guys should see. Do you need to take a minute? Right now. Let's you should get a picture just, of me so that it can reverted go along. back to being sixteen years old. I mean, yeah. we are in the mall right now. <laughs> right. With We're right. in the mall. <laughs> Oh, Bryce is the coolest Bryce, kid. Do what? you need to take a 311 a break? I might need an you ice and a, a Wex's pretzel, break. bro. I mean, but other than that, I'm, I'm chill. I'm like so cool to hang out with Bryce. I <laughs> always right. like forge his parents' signatures to get him out of school. And like, he let me hang out with him now. And I'm just like, let's get an Orange uh, Julius. Let's do it. Let's that was like Bryce it. Ollie's out of here. <laughs> Holy cow! That was kickflip, maybe. <laughs> that was the best moment when we were in Salt Lake City. And we were having dinner, and Grace asked you who your favorite band was, and you said 311. That was a really good <laughs> well, moment. yeah. That was a really Just, good They moment. rock. <laughs> Nothing they do. Nothing Listen. against 311. Um, so I was just doing some light Googling here <laughs> okay. about um, cryptids from Laos. Oh, yes. Oh, no way. And Great. I don't know if you know, the first thing that popped up what? is the, now you're going to have to help me with my pronunciation. It's okay. I apologize. It's okay. The Faya Naga. Oh, yeah. Mm. Do you know what these are? Mythical serpent like no creatures. Oh, no that way. is sick. So He's she just rolled up her sleeve and reveals a monstrous serpent <laughs> tattoo. Let me that is sit dope. back and wow. shut up and listen. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. I've heard of them before. Well, because it's no saying way. right here the, Mi- cool. the Mekong River, yes. which is connected. Is your, so the Mekong you're... River is essentially uh, like the border between Thailand and Laos. Mm-hmm. And Mekong is uh, Kong means river and Me means mother. Mekong. Mm. Cool. So it's the, the Mother River. Mother River and, and the lifeblood to both Thailand, Laos, uh, the deltas in Cambodia. Oh. So many people li- live off of off of the the water they uh fish and and so um i kept so the nak or the naga they are um almost like uh in europe how uh fairies okay were a a, a race of beings so were the nak or the naga some in china they call them naga so they're serpents right, right. Cool. and so there's lots of tales of you know they're, they're 
monarchies and princes. They were like one of the race of people, basically. One of the tribes of beings, basically. And so they are the protectors of uh, the capital of Yongzhen. They're, they're just like so many sort of mythical um, tales. That is so cool. How did you discover this cryptid and then get it? So if you, when you go to, you. <laughs> when you go to Laos, like uh, the iconography, the iconography, what? iconography? Yeah. Iconography. Thank iconography. you. There we go. I didn't hit the right syllable. <laughs> you spelled it correctly. <laughs> yeah, we were with you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so on all the temples, they're everywhere. Cool. They're on on buildings. They're everywhere. It's so much a part of um, culture and civilization and the stories. Um, it really is like they 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 live and and there is belief that they still. I don't know why they left and if there's somewhat of a Loch Ness quality of that they you know because um, there's still dragon boat races that happen in the Mekong River. There's wow. still sort of a fireball phenomenon that happens, and they seem like they have they're more involved involved with the society than than Loch Ness is. Loch yes. Ness is more of a, a loner. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't really get. That's right. Like That's he right. Lone wolf comes out, so yes. some sheep every now and then, <laughs> sure. but he's not like. Yeah, really. He doesn't about want to be it. part of the culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 this is like there's the communities, and uh, they're also um, said to be uh, uh, shapeshifters. Oh no way! Yeah, cool. Can they shapeshift into humans? Do yeah, they... yeah, they can. And that there there were marriages between uh, princes and 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 human princesses, no and way. there was yeah. So does the mythology extend to that these were real physical? Entities and not just uh, creatures of the spiritual domain. That's right. That's wild. That's, it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. This Do you rad. know of any other cool cryptids from Laos? <laughs> As she pulls up her next sleeve. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, it's funny that you mentioned. Well, I mean, there's so much. Um, uh, there was like sort of like the there. There's crossover between like um, Indian. Uh, culture Sanskrit culture from the kind of like north from the north coming down and then you also have like um K- Khmer sort of coming up from Cambodia and so there's this mixture of like different beings like you know you've got the the monkey king you've got like um there's so uh there what's up the monkey K- the monkey king was originally going to be the centerpiece of Temple of Doom the original mm. draft, ah. the second they were going to do, it was going to all take place in Asia, and they were going to do like the whole Monkey King thing, and that was like an early draft. Of- oh, Interesting. that's cool. Yeah. Uh, there's a Kinali, which is like a half uh, person, half bird, and they were a warrior. Cool. Um, and, and that sounds very dancers. Legend of Zelda. Yes, it does. Like yeah, the very. Rito people. Um, there. <laughs> you got one for all cool. of these. <laughs> I, I think you do. I think you do. Michael's nerd just really jumped yeah, out on wow. that one. <laughs> As often as uh, the case, and there is a lot of like, oh, it's a, it's a, I forget what they're called, but they're like it's an elephant slash lion. There's, you know, wow, yeah, me, <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's you, there's Grace. I no. forgot, there's Grace. No, that sounded like my spirit animal, oh, elephant okay. slash lion. That sounded like a really sick spirit animal. I like it. That's pretty rad. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to think of other. Well, um, the these are real. These are real. Um, have you guys ever heard of Irwadi dolphins? No. no. They're freshwater dolphins. They live in the Mekong Delta. They have snub noses. Were those in your movie? Because there's a little yes. shot when you guys are in the boat. And but the... they're so far yeah. away. And we couldn't. I was like, oh, my father had never seen one before, even though he was from the islands there. Um, but we couldn't get closer because uh, it was in Cambodia, like the Delta. Like it was in a different country and we couldn't cross. But they're they're really highly endangered so the fact that mm. we saw two cresting was like an incredible experience that i wish i could have shown in the film but like it was magical to be on the river and to see these like just beautiful creatures that they just they kind of have i mean it's just not human face but when you picture a bottle nose yeah no <laughs> like, like, a little, like, yeah, like kind of like almost like a beluga whale or like a yeah. seal, maybe. What pull are they it called? up. I'm gonna pull it up. I I R A W A D D Y. They're the pugs of dolphins. Yes, that's right. Mm, that's wild. Uh, I, f- I forget who talks about the. Uh... Oh, these are the cutest thing you've ever seen. 
No. Let me see. And oh they're, boy! They're leaving oh boy. us. It's it's a it's heartbreaking. You know what? Uh, I mean, oh. I don't blame them, but oh, I know wow. it's not their choice. <laughs> what? Oh my god! Oh my that is pretty. Cute. They kind of look like an alien gray. Yeah, a little they, bit. Yeah, they look like a cross between an alien gray and a teenage mutant ninja turtle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Either unfortunately, way, uh, yeah. there's a lot of damming that's happening on the river, and also, uh, unfortunately, there is. Look at them! Come wow, on, that's a trip. They are kind of person-like. The yes, there is also fishing with dynamite, which will oh, oh, decimate anything. So there you go. Oh, hmm. well, that's the name of this episode: fishing with dynamite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So cool up. Uh, Bryce, we don't have any BCC news this week. I no. don't think. Great. Nope. Let's get yeah. right into Let's do it. Kulop. Yes. What is your personal paranormal history? Okay. Have you ever encountered anything strange? Yes. Do you believe in it? Any- Great. We'll yes. start there. Let's just start there. Jump right in. Let's go. Put some I dynamite mean, in the water. I'm just, you know, this is just, okay, let me, where do I start? Um, um, start with when you shapeshifted from Naga into Kulop. <laughs> In 1981. That, that would be a great starting point. A year after I was born. I have some notes on origin story. Oh, okay, is needs now more the time? N- now we need more Naga. <laughs> it's locked. I'm not going back into okay, editing, fair enough, Michael. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, so we're got, moving got on. It, got it, got it, Maybe there will be a prequel. No, there will not. <laughs> no. Um, parent- okay, so... Like I said, Laotian people, Lao people, it's like it's not even, it's not even like, are there ghosts? There are ghosts. Mm. And um, there are different type of uh, ghosts uh, in Lao are P. So like P, P lock. So I've been brought up of like not doing certain things to not invite spirits. Like, oh, wow. In, and in my life, there have been times with certainty that I have encountered spirits and have not wanted to communicate. Okay. So, this so you're is a cautious theme. of this energy or the, or these I don't, spirits. Yes, I don't I'm not I don't mm-hmm. want it. I yeah. don't I, I believe I it is exists. Um I think there are probably pe- better people to communicate with. Yeah. What do you think those um, are? Are they the spirits of the dead or souls? Yeah. I think that. <laughs> yeah. Um and then I think there are also demons and I think there are also okay, gotcha. like um um uh, sp- uh, po- like I don't, angels are a different word for right. angels. I are, think they're are the p like are they ancestral? Or are they a different spiritual like creature altogether? There are like in- ancestral like you're oh like p lock means like you're being haunted by like and it's probably somebody who's alive. But then there are also like specific um and I'm not as versed because I'm scared of yes. <laughs> like but like there's certain different types of like demon um p. Like there's like the woman who, like there's like a headless woman. There's a woman who is so just head and torso. That's the one I'm thinking of. Is <laughs> yeah. that uh, is it the one? There's one that I've heard of. Pikonkoi. That is like a head, torso, and guts of a yes. woman oh who like haunts. Yeah. No thanks. Well, it yeah. sounds like there's different archetypes. These of are these. scary. Yeah. I am somebody who I think will be good in sort of an apocalyptic situation or when shit goes down <laughs> which it will it yeah. will like i have certain skills right. for to survive and anything truly can be made into a weapon and i've really sort of made my life to figure these things out do not like a scary movie fuck you i'm no ever never going to hollow a halloween uh horror, nights. horror nights i can't even say it um like i <laughs> because it's not fair to the performers because I want to hurt them. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's, because they're coming at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to come at them. So no, <laughs> what's the uh, what's the one where they throw a bag over your head and then they touch you a lot? Oh, uh, that is not. It's like, I'm not is that like sure? an escape room? It's like, I, I'm was that your birthday? You. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. just October 21st. <laughs> in my house. <laughs> and I'm the only one there. <laughs> Good God. It's Sleep No More. Sleep No More. That's the one where it's like a no. real big production and they like uh, oh, yeah. kidnap you basically. Like in New York, mm. right? And then you also like follow people around yeah. and they do theater. It's too much. I don't need that in my life. I really don't. I like a scary movie. I like a scary story. And I forgot to mention that we are in the second week of our month-long Halloween celebration right. so our story today is a little fucked up and okay. i'm apologizing in advance i like a story 
Okay. I, I do like a story. Um, movies I'm not into as much, but if you there don't want to see it, I don't want to see it. But if there, you can hook me in if there's any sort of like folklore yeah. or if there's any like backstory about why. Like I'm not into just like slashing or whatever, but like <laughs> um, I'm not into like, that. Like where's your where's your backstory, slasher? <laughs> yeah, like right. what happened to you? <laughs> and like something went down right because you were like, what was the possession? Right. What was the story of the possession? Yeah. Like the ring, the ring got me. That right. super scared me. But I'm like, what? Mm. I kept thinking, what happened to Samara? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How'd she get in there? Mm-hmm. What? Who? Why her mom put her in there? <laughs> <laughs> Right. You These know? are the tough right. questions. Why? I don't know how she got on that tape. You must. But why is she in the well? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know. Well, you must like Jason. Jason has yeah. a good backstory. Yeah, he does. I guess he does. Weird mm-hmm. kid who drowned in the lake. Yeah, I guess. Are you the type of person where if it's culturally like appropriate to watch a horror movie, like for instance, like uh, like The Sixth Sense or like It or like I don't know Alien, like something that everyone's watching, will you watch it? But I want like I wasn't the witch or something. I don't know. Mm, no, no, no. Not and I not tried to be cool for a long time, but right. I'm nearing forty. I'm like I'm gonna live my life how I want to. Mm. Like <laughs> I can't be pulled into it. No <laughs> peer pressure. I cannot. Yeah. It clowns. Was, yeah, scary was, clowns. Yeah. No. Killer clowns from outer space. That is a classic. Great. Great Absolutely movie. great movie. Um, but you are into like sci-fi, mm. fantasy, yes. comics, all that, yes. obviously. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. got it. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Definitely, definitely. Um, so let's go back to something you said a little bit earlier. Okay, what I said. Where say? you said that you have had experiences with P that you okay. think yes. in your life. Is that how you say it? Is it with the P or P? P. Okay. Yeah. So can you... And not urine, you guys. Stop. Uh, come on. <laughs> we all see the joke. It's sitting right there on the table. We're not taking <laughs> it. Um, <laughs> what were some of those specific uh, encounters or moments? Walk us through a couple of those. And, uh, you know, uh, everyone... Because the thing that we always find is like, you know, it's rare, even though there's one of us who's had, in, sitting in the room, I'm pointing to Grace, who's had has witnessed a, a real-life UFO. Mm. But uh, most people seem to have, like, a ghostly encounter at some time in their life. For a lot of people to come and do our show have had something like this. So There's um, so many people who haven't, though, that I... That's, that's true. That I've no- I guess they're drawn to you because they're being called. Well, you know, and it's funny. We, we've right. we've made this joke a million times on the show, but, like, we've found... You're, you obviously have a large uh, uh, part in the world of comedy, and we have found that... I don't know if you found, find this to be true, but actors yeah. are very into ghosts. <laughs> Whereas comedians are like, no. No, so you're skeptical. right. But actors are like, no, trust me. My spirit ghost like told me I was going to be an actor. <laughs> like, It's crazy. Yeah, it's- that is interesting because it's like, like, yeah, most comics I know are like, well, n- logic, 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 yeah, yeah, logic. Yeah. <laughs> like- which, is, which, I mean, I guess it makes sense. <laughs> actors are like very imagination and emotionally led. But like Ben Acker... I think it was, no, it was Ben Blacker who was on our show. He and his wife both individually saw a ghost in their house. Mm. Oh, wow. And still don't believe in ghosts. He still didn't believe. Saw well, a I don't understand. physical <laughs> human did I. Trust being your... sitting in an old timey suit in a chair in their house didn't tell one another that they had seen it on separate occasions until a mutual, I think Ben mentioned it to a mutual friend. He goes, uh, yeah, your wife saw the same thing. Why are you guys talking about this? And he sat here and he was like, yeah, but I don't believe in ghosts. Well, what was that then? Exactly. A shared hallucination no. that wasn't shared at the same time? I, it's yeah. a, it was a ghost. That's a, I there, agree. There, there, there's can... a disconnect when, pe- when, when people talk about that stuff. There's like, oh, yeah, there's got to be an explanation for it, even though I saw it and I can't explain it. It's mm. ridiculous. I mean, I'm open to the idea that like we don't understand what ghosts are. Yes. And that there could be a interdimensional or scientific ex- explanation. They may not be... You know, maybe it is just like a biological echo of some kind, mm-hmm. some sort of fingerprint on time. I, I get all that. Or if like you somehow fall in without the use of LSD, you right. ch- you briefly there's a glitch, yes. and like the antenna switches a well, little now you're bit. Talking yeah, some matrix, yeah. <laughs> now you're talking yeah. Now you're talking third eye. <laughs> yep. Now you're talking DMT. Yes, I am. <laughs> the yeah. spirit molecule. Yes. 
It's a great book. Someone has read some Doctor. Is it Rick Strassman? Rick Strassman, yeah. Yeah. I have I have? Um, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So. So for me, let's see. Let's talk about. Uh, when I was in Laos and we were staying um, uh, in Thakak, which is where my father is from, and we were staying in a motel in the second second level of a two-story kind of motel, and I am watching, uh, there's two beds, my two much younger sisters um, are sleeping in sort of a twin bed, they're asleep, I am watching, um, I think it was, uh, uh, um, uh, What's Rango, it? that gecko animated film starring Johnny Depp. <laughs> really close, two no. and a half men, dubbed in Thai. <laughs> okay, <right. laughs> Much better. <laughs> and I'm watching that, and all of a sudden I feel a sort of pressure upon my chest, and I hear two, it's two children playing. At first it seemed like they were running around on the uh, roof, and then it was as if they were playing, if there was almost a little less space between myself and the ceiling in the studio right now, just a little bit lower, maybe to there. Oh, wow. They're playing here. So about so it was four or five right feet above, above your head. Yeah, and it's not visual. It's a, there is a, it's sensation. sound, it's a sensation. They're playing, they're not, it's, yeah. And this is a full oral or audio yeah. sensation. You're yeah. hearing, it's not like you're receiving it telepathically. You're hearing it in the room. Ah, uh, well, that's interesting. But <laughs> hard to say. Okay, when that's when fair. when posed with that, I'm not sure. Okay, mm. that's totally girls, fair. Girls aren't up; they're sleeping. TV, you know, who knows? Yeah, I guess I don't know. Okay. I perceive it as in the moment. I perceive it as if there's a weight, there's air, there's mm. a sound of children playing. Okay, that's creepy. Um, and what's the first thing that comes to your mind in that moment? Um. I don't. Uh, I don't want this, and I don't want to communicate. <laughs> I know it exists, and I am not a medium. <laughs> like, I am not going to talk to you. I'm not a medium. And uh, my second example is kind of a clearer version of that philo- <laughs> that life philosophy. <laughs> um, first time I went to New York, I think I was 25. Uh, I think most people have been in New York at that point, but this was my first time. My friend Monica Pasantes moved there. And she was staying with a friend in Stuyvesant Village, um, Stuyvesant Town, and uh, a lot. Of, it's like pre-war uh, rent control, and so I had always heard like, "Oh, New York apartments are tiny." Not this apartment. This was huge, cool. and they had like so little. What part of town is that in? Stuyvesant. It's like, like, like uh, nuts. the buildings are like this. They're tall. Um, <laughs> is it in? Is it in like Brooklyn? No, okay, okay. Good. don't worry not, about not it. Quite Brooklyn, okay. Not quite Brooklyn. I never lived Brooklyn. in New York. I'll look I it up right it now. Okay. Uh, it is, yeah, it's right here. It's um, I'm pulling it up. Thank I'm you. not connected to the internet. Anyway, go on. Yes, so, I think it's Lower East Side. Okay, so uh, it's there's like a huge main room with parquet floors. I mean, this is a large apart, two large bedrooms. Mm-hmm. Nice galley kitchen. Like, wow, this is huge. What are they paying? Something like twelve hundred at the time. Wow, this is insane. Love insane. That. And the reason why is her her um yeah, it's just above the East Village. Bus, okay, but. um her friend uh who she, her roommate uh she she her she basically sort of inherited her grandfather was still alive but he needed to move out of the apartment and so it's sort of through legacy that she has the place. On the last day that I stayed there, I was sleeping in Monica's room for the most time, most part, and then um the last night I stayed there, uh the her roommate. Left and she's like, you can stay in my room. I was like, okay, cool, thank you. Um, and so I uh, went to bed. Uh, I was had my iPod in. Uh, I was listening to Coldplay. Shh, nice. shh quiet, quiet. <laughs> that's, 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 that's probably what brought it on. <laughs> this isn't the first time we've heard that. <laughs> And then I, my glasses are off. If you guys can kind of tell, I have bad eyesight. Yes, they're very. Oh yeah, you, the, you and I are. Uh, yeah, um, but I felt I, my eyes woke up. My the the shot open, the shot open. I felt cold. I felt a chill. I was not alone. I'm lying down. I hear Chris Martin's dulcet tones, <laughs> 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 and then I feel and I look, and there is I no, I can't see detail. It's a woman, and she's wearing a lot of clothes. 
and she is what asked me why I'm there. She mm-hmm. is there's a um she's looking at me. She's, you know, and I was like, "No, I'm not doing this. I'm <laughs> not doing this. I'm not doing." This. You don't get to ask Covers me over shit. The head. I'm not yeah. going to do this. <laughs> like she's what else do play. we have? <laughs> right, <A> scientist. Right. <laughs> In the morning, I ask questions. Um, you mentioned that a uh, grandfather lived here. Um, wh- where's grandma? Grandma passed away. Where did grandma pass away? In that room. Mm. Mm. Oh, hell no. Yeah, no, no, no. Like, she was just, I think her vibe was like, you're not another my woman in my You're bed. not my granddaughter. Right. You're not yeah. my granddaughter. Wow. Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. Just like checking in, like, what's up with Who this? Who are you? Yeah. This is my house. <laughs> like, was she talking directly to you? At me, mm. and it was a le- It was less like conversation and more like being vibe vibed at. Um, ooh, cool up. Yes, I think you might be. I refuse. Amy, <laughs> nope. You can refuse the call, I and then you can stop reading the book. <laughs> your t-shirt size <laughs> is a nice, cozy. It medium. actually is not. <laughs> <clears throat> it's not. She's a large. And Ooh. so oh. she's not a medium. Yeah. <laughs> I think you are. Well, it doesn't make you a medium it. just if you experience a few spirits. Yeah. I, I think there's a sensitivity. Puts the odds in your favor. <laughs> um, no, thank you. Uh, I, there's, yeah, there's sort of like a sensitivity and there's like, I'm not, there's, I, I am a skeptic about certain things, you know. But... What What are you skeptical about? <sighs> okay. And you better not say Bigfoot. No, I'm just kidding. Mm, I'm in, very much into Yeti, Bigfoot. No, like that stuff's very interesting to me. Um, <laughs> uh, hominids, cryptids, mm-hmm, interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, well, like I'm not going to believe everything that some, even, even like... I'm full California. I do the shaman thing. I do, you know, various oh, no healing moda- modalities I've done. But it's like, I'm, I don't, I am picky and choosy about, picky and choosy uh, about that stuff too. It's not, not everything. I think as yeah, you should you know, be. Yeah, you know, like, I'm not going to prescribe to everything or subscribe to everything. Yeah, but it sounds like you're just, you're open to this phenomena, whatever it is. Or you're just, you're you're open to the idea of uh, of something existing beyond just the physical realm. And that yes. might, that might alone might open you up to certain encounters, whether you're a, you know, medium or not, you know, when you're open to these things, they seem to uh, attract back to you, you know? Yeah, I think there's, I mean, it, it will, lots of things may come back to, you know, my origin story and like being lied to for years. Mm. So there's things like I'm very much into like alternative history, which I know this is sort of sidestep from what we're no, talking no, this about. Week, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Of like, well, I don't think that history is as linear as we've been taught. I think it's even been proven that there were other continents and when we can talk about Atlantis and mm-hmm. the Moo and they like, just yeah. discovered you know, a whole big continent under underneath Europe yes. last week. Oh, last week. Oh. Yeah. Well, a couple of weeks ago as you're listening to this, but last last episode we covered it. Yeah, I'm fascinated by that. I mean, we see in, in Malta, we see tracks that go into the water. I'm very much into Graham Hancock. Does everything he I say- I was going to ask you about <laughs> like, Graham Hancock yeah. because yeah. you were talking in, about the- Fingerprints of the gods, yeah. Yeah. which yeah. would then lead to aliens, which would then lead to, you know, like how were the pyramids built? So all these things are fascinating to me, and I just don't think- there's just so much possibility and like greater knowledge to be had by thinking about like, oh, it just it things aren't so linear. And just because someone has told you something like he's your dad, <laughs> it can come out <laughs> a little different. Yeah, right? absolutely. Like, well, I think the takeaway is that history is up for grabs. You know what I mean? Nobody really knows you know, where we came from. Even the, you know, and what they teach in the schools is just so banal. It's like, yeah, I get it. You know, I but... ain't from no monkey. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I know. I'll tell you that right now. I'm an I'm an Atlantean high priest. <laughs> I'm Lemurian, motherfucker. I'm fucking. Oh yeah, but... I got me some Lemurian crystals. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. rub them down. Like where my knowledge at? <laughs> we got blown off by the Lemurian crystal guy. Yeah, contact he was, he... in the desert. He would. Not I think talk he was afraid us. of our powerful energy. That's, that's all. True. Yeah. Um, he wasn't into us. Uh 
but but Kulop, I think you bring up a really good point too, especially like you know there there you do live whether it's under the impression of what your family tree is or the nature of reality <laughs> itself. I mean, you grow up the first five, six, seven years, I mean, years of your life, anywhere from, you know, up till age 10, usually with the belief that the world is and works a certain way, you know, even like the spoiler, uh, hey, if they're kids listening, if you're listening with your kids, we're going to get into some Christmas spoilers. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, and it's but only like Halloween. when you learn that like, you know, Santa's not real. That was like a big paradigm shift. And then, you know, that leads to me going as a kid, like, all right, if Santa's not real, then is God not real? And then, or like, what else are adults hiding or lying about? Um, You know, obviously like puberty is a weird, crazy time where you're like, (laughs) oh, now I'm entering into (laughs) like a whole, I know, but I'm saying it is a reality shifting thing. I know, I was just And it always kind of has put in the back of my mind this idea of, all right, what are the other secrets that I'm not being told? Mm -hmm. Yes. When is the other, there's a part of me that, and I think this is what appeals to a lot of people about the Masons, the Freemasons and secret societies cults and all the this stuff Templar. yeah mm-hmm. that there's there is hidden knowledge out there and there and are 33rd hidden, level yeah yeah, yeah for sure where you're going to be revealed another version of reality that uh yes. you don't know about that the rest of Take us are being the kept pill, right right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah exactly What's the thing and that'll open you up yeah or yeah smoke the dmt and That's i keep right. i keep going when is that gonna happen again and i think it's like well it's now you realize as an adult that's it has to be self-invoked in in some way, you know. Yeah, and then but- there's also when my like when my friend Harris died, I remember going like this idea of death is too big for me, mm. and I remembering like drowning in it. And you, it, yeah, as anyone who's experienced grief, of course, it comes in waves. But like, just like, but this thirty year old b- vibrant person who that he does not exist and that he is not just like to this day, a lot, a lot of his friends just joke. It's like, he's just not going to, sh- he's going to show up again. Mm. Mm. Like he, ne- like he's just been gone for a little bit. Right. Like yeah. mm. he'll just come back. Um, But that's not the case. And, and that's a, it's such a massive idea that you're that, here and then you're gone. That, like, di- it's that just, disappearance yeah. is so insane. It's so heavy. Yes. So then, I mean, and this is what we're talking about, the paranormal, we're talking about ghosts, yeah, we're talking about, you know, and so it it is, there there are certain big ideas that I, you, I was like, I guess kind of get the idea of an initiation, right? And like, you being able to, that certain knowledge you'd have to be prepared to take in, to hold, or, you know, you... It'll break your brain. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, Bring it all right? back to Indy. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Like, what is, what, what's the Ark of the Covenant? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Melt your face off. Melt your face off if you can't take it. Yeah. <laughs> like, <I> will. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if you've been working out and like getting numb in certain areas, you take it in, it's like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. You know, like not everybody can. Um, where uh, take to Marvel, right? Like, if you put on that glove, Thanos's glove, yep. you got to be built. There's a cost, right? Mm. So I do think about that, you know. Like, so you do the initiations, you wear the robes and the mask, yeah, because no, you're just... in the knowledge. You can't have it has to build to a certain point, and mm. so where are you at with that? Like, what is that? I don't know. I still eat dairy. Right I'm sure that dulls me. <laughs> <laughs> Initiation denied. Come yeah. on, pineal gland. <laughs> No, oh, my sugar intake. Fluoride, <laughs> dairy, yeah. sugar. Um, but yeah, I mean, like yeah. all clogged up. I mean, what, do you feel like you're uh, like at a? I mean, not mm. to make it all. You know, I'm happy to talk. I don't want to. I don't want to make it all about your movie. But I. But the thing that I thought was really cool about origin story is like that's definitely initiation. I mean, that in and right. of itself, you're sort of going through some sort of transformational ritual in that whole film, you know what I mean? And so, you know, there's that moment where you're with your husband at the end of the movie and you're like, I think talking about, I can't remember the specific conversation, but you're like, if this, like, there's a moment where 
you guys are kind of talking about the path you're on now, career wise and creativity wise, and it's almost like you needed to go through this part of your life in order to break through to this other space in your life. Yeah. I think about that a lot too. It obviously comes up in therapy, yeah. like those things that block us and prevent us. And that's just very practical. And that's, that's not true. even necessarily supernatural. But I think oftentimes the efforts to get through those personal blocks, to get out of your own way, to get over trauma and get over to stuff that's happened to you that I haven't dealt with, it does feel like a magical process yes. and a supernatural process to get through that. It's certainly cathartic, you know, Definitely right? Definitely cathartic. I do feel battle-born. Um, like, I'm just certainly through that process was bruised and battered, but I'm stronger yeah. for it. And there's so many things, especially in my 20s, and my early 30s where I was just like, if I do this, I think I might die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and and I haven't. Yeah. And if right. anything, uh, if I had the ovaries to go meet a stranger in Laos who was my father and I survived, mm-hmm. then I can probably do the stuff that we like. Well, you know, right. there's a lot of things. And not- you start to feel the weight and prioritize things and know what I'm capable of. Well, and not only that, but you're also taking that process and turning it into a piece of art. You're forcing yourself to look at yourself and your family and edit that together and create a story out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and that, I mean, most people just unpack this stuff in therapy. They don't then go make a movie about it, you know? And in that process, that was the hardest. It's like, oh, yeah, like going to Laos, you know, get a plane ticket, but figuring out how to tell that story and to put form to my dysfunction, Yeah, that was tough. Yeah. And we're not sp- meant to have footage of our memories in different camera angles Mm. Mm. and it's it's trippy it's trippy to see myself not say something when i could have why didn't you press him and then to feel those feelings judging that person who is me and then directing (laughs) like it's it's a strange it's it's a mind psychedelic yeah it's a little bit yeah yeah and then while being so in it and just so split and then the act of doing the film is bringing it together and deciding well sure that's interesting that did happen but let's what's the story what's the story what's Mm -hmm. the story who do what do you want in the end what you know making those choices but then there's also like these moments of joy like on the river and seeing those dolphins and then you you know being like oh this is I am in this magical place. You yes. know what I mean? So it's just really like, it yeah. is a magic. You sort of created your own magical ritual. And and this tattoo is about that. Yeah. I went through this experience and then I, I, I this is my only tattoo and I got a massive one of a serpent. <laughs> like, yeah, well, you did it right. It's I awesome. it, it was because I went, th- this thing happened and it had been happening for, you know, as many years as I was alive. And I felt a sort of like, like this is how I'm gonna commemorate that, and it was it was very it was ritual. Yeah. But like that, this is I mean I've just uh, in terms of my initiate, like I do good and then I don't, and sure. then I do great and then I'm very human and then I'm like small but then I'm big and then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the thing about you know? initiation. I mean, even though it's a process of rebirth and you know a phoenix rises from the ashes, it doesn't mean you're 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 perfect or that you're on some unscathable level. You you know you still have to like once you get I think you know to other levels, there's still going to be new problems and challenges and and the initiation process never really stops. I mean, you know, yeah, and that's, there's, that's, that's there's always another stuff. level above. You yeah, know? I was like, and especially if I've ever in, in my journey of trying to heal myself and be a better person, I always, I thought of, I think of it like as like, like, oh wait, no, it's like a Nintendo game and like, once I beat a level, then yeah. I'm done with that level. Yeah. Well, that's not necessarily true. Sometimes you backslide. Sometimes you, and I'm like, and Absolutely. I would get so upset. Like, I already fi- I already figured that out. Why mm. am I doing this still? Except <laughs> level 33. That's the last level. Oh, man. The and 33 guys, is the last level. That's right. And it's, it's at and then, cl- <laughs> Club 33 in Disneyland. Every, every level after that is just 333. Yeah. Yeah. Transformation is pie. fucking mm. hard. You know, yeah, yeah, <sighs> especially so, when you're 
What? Constantly haunted by ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not. It was two occasions. Two occasions. I mean, there's some. I'm trying to think. Those are the most. That's too many occasions. <laughs> That's like too much for me. I think even. there are far more than two, and you're just yeah. not being honest with yourself. There are some times where I've like, we got like, Scott's just like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, I remember we were at, we were at, he was like, wanted to show me. Uh, like it was like his, the middle school or elementary school that he went to in like Cypress, Orange County. And I was just struck like, we need to leave now. And he was mm. like, what? I'm like, mm. we must get in the car now. <laughs> like I just get certain feelings. Yeah. That like Spidey oh. sense it stuff. Totally. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. And I don't want, I, I'm not, I cannot believe you. I believe you exist. I'm just not interested in like seeing where this will go. <laughs> like, right. Right. Yeah. What's your interest in shamanism? What? How do you explore that? In the modality of healing and and wanting to in, in the th- as a modality for healing. Gotcha. Um and uh I've always um like if I'm looking like at tarot cards and stuff, what I I tend to prefer cards that have like animals. Yeah. Animal I can picture I don't really understand like uh cups I, I know what cups are but you know what I'm like, yeah, like right. the hanging man oh, the sure. this is awkward Clop, you what? Might, um, the I mean, you're, it's, <laughs> you know that's the you're cup you're into this shit you, I mean you are deep into this shit yeah, yeah. my 30s was this like um, 30s was this, I called it the wellness train and I just tried a bunch of different stuff and some stuck some didn't I still kind of do sort of journeying on my own going to certain places i mean it sounds like it you're you're, i mean you're talking our language this is all the stuff that we're interested in is is lost civilizations shamanism other worlds spirits uh you know the unknown death you know initiation self-initiation you know these are all the things that propel us to you know journey not into our only psyche but into this outer world that you know everybody else thinks they can describe or reduce to a materialist world you know these are i think what interests us and and uh, it, i'm just kind of curious i guess as to like where do you think this whole interest sparked from and i suppose if i watched your film then i might get an idea which i, I don't will know. i mean would you i don't know if you would mm, it I maybe think, comes think... from before that even huh yeah, I think even when you were reciting, because everything you said I'm so interested in, I think it comes into this idea of connection mm-hmm. and being interconnected and it being beyond like material things. And, and that's what the animals kind of do for you, right? Yeah, and they represent something to me. They're sort of on, um, uh, they're... They're totems. Yeah, yeah. they're um, not marred by stupid shit like absolutely. Twitter. Absolutely. <laughs> right, right. Look at him. No, <laughs> like, absolutely. She's pointing Nova's, to Nova. Nova's when, so blissed out When right Nova's now. scared, he gets up and he leaves. He Or he fights. Mm-hmm. Or he doesn't sit there lost in his feelings. Well, but I don't want to offend anybody. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. It's he, a pure consciousness. Yeah. You know, he truly it's not is, I have to shit. Yeah. yeah. Here yeah. I go. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's... So <laughs> Meanwhile, this bitch goes to. <laughs> oh wait, Kulak's Miraval. actually shitting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I go to Miraval and I, I'm like, let me go try this horse therapy. And <laughs> truly, you guys, I was the first up because I always go first because I'm an Aries moon. I love and that. And <laughs> all we had to do was scrape. To touch the su- touch the horse yep. to have him kick up his hoof so we can clean the shit off. Yeah, yeah. Right. and it was so hard for me. It wasn't at first. I was crying. I didn't want to hurt this massive being. By the way, <laughs> like I'm yeah. like, no, I'm a monster. I don't want to hurt it. And he's like, just do it. Just do it. It was such a. I've seen this done. I'm, this it's is amazing. Miraval. What's Miraval Mir- is what I call uh, probably rich lady camp. Oh, okay. Because uh, is it a town? It's a. It's a. There's the one that I went or to is in program. Tucson. It's a. It's a. It's a hotel. It's a resort. Okay. Oprah and Gail have been there. If gotcha. That gives you a sense. Got a little, like, little, little, little flavor. Yes. Yeah. There's a little flavor. Um. You can go there. There's like uh, mindful eating, and you can take various yoga classes. There's mm-hmm. you know. Um, you can walk a lab, a stone labyrinth. You know, this is this is the things that we're doing. Is oh. that right? What I'm saying? You know, sure. where it's yeah, like a, right. okay, good. yeah, no, that's it. Um, you could get trapped in a maze for hours at a time. <laughs> David might, Bowie shows up. Might fight a minotaur at the center. But I've seen this this therapy technique you're talking yeah. about with horses, and it has this incredible healing factor that seems somewhat hard to explain because, like yes. you said, all you're doing is getting approaching this left side of the horse uh, and lifting his foot. I just foot. gotta do this. I just yeah. do that and he'll kick up. Right. And I'm like, I can't, I can't. Why yeah. do you think you're... Like, literally, in this man, this bearded man... Um, 
who Casey Wilson, who's with me, bought me the book. It's not about the horse. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's just like what what is going you know why do you think you're so problematic what do you like right. finally i get to do it i finally it happens and then i start scraping he's like don't you're scraping it the shit on you <laughs> wow it's amazing so that way i'm just like <laughs> yes <laughs> yes <laughs> like, just towards my body oh, yeah. just <laughs> metaphor after metaphor Met, i'm just like <laughs> what so i so when going into like the upper or lower lower world and seeing who shows up, they're usually like animals for me. They're usually, you know, like a wolf or pro- a moose, and they're telling me things, and like it's it's comforting to me. They're the animals. I just I yeah. do they show up in dreams a lot? Sometimes they talk to you. In dreams? Sometimes. I mean, I have like lucid dreaming a lot sometimes, but and then sometimes I don't remember. Sometimes I have weird, weird programming that has mm-hmm. nothing to do with anything. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. sure, um, stress yeah. dreams happen oh, too that are sure. like just nothing but stress yeah, and anxiety. Exactly. Yes. I've been thinking of getting into astral projection. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm, I, wow, yeah. I've I'm been, here for it. Yeah, okay, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, I know, just, I'm good. Into it. Dude, I just love your segue sometimes, that's all. <laughs> well, she's do talking it. about lucid yeah, no, dreaming. Do it, I've, do it. Yeah. I've experienced and I've tried that. I was like, it's very difficult. And I was like, you know, I love my sleep. So maybe I'll try the the awake version of what I think lucid dreaming is. And that's, you know, astral. Pro- I mean, obviously, they're two different things. But, but I was like, I think I'm going to try to learn how to astral project. Do mm. it. Do people it. people cool. learn how to do it because sometimes they'll have sleep paralysis, which mm. causes astral projection. Right, and then and then they'll be like, "What the hell was that?" And then they'll look it up and be like, "Oh, I just like astral projected because of my sleep paralysis." No, oh, it's interesting. And I've I that's how I learned about it from a friend of mine who had sleep paralysis, and I was like interested in astral projecting from then. I'll let you know how but it goes. I wanted to know if there was a specific animal, like a specific one, that comes up a lot. Um. Uh, right now, I'm thinking wolves, but then I'm also looking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's he's mesmerizing. The, dude, yeah. that's the good one, the wolf. Yeah, but like, I see moose. I see, you know, oh. um, wasn't expecting that. Yeah, <laughs> I see. What's the connection to the moose? Um, let's see. I don't know what the connection with the moose. I mean, there's, you know, I'm from Minnesota. There's a uh, the big, you know, backwoods north. Mm-hmm. Not that, but the Twin Cities is just the tiniest part. And it wasn't like I was in the Great North a lot, but they're huge. <laughs> um, they're very auspicious mm-hmm. an- animals, um, usually bearers of of good things. They're very strong, but don't fuck with them kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, solitary like, uh, too. Solitary, that's true. Um, I mean, the the dragon, the mm-hmm. serpent has been, you know, a snake kind of thing. But in the last five years. Slytherin. This is about hu- about Slytherin. <laughs> it turns on a Hufflepuff. <laughs> that wow. tracks. She's yeah. into or everything. wait, or am I a Ravenclaw? I'm Ravenclaw. You might be in my house. Pottermore said I'm Ravenclaw. I think I'm a Hufflepuff. Scott's a Hufflepuff too. I think we're both Hufflepuffs. That tracks. <laughs> From what we're talking about, it definitely tracks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start talking about ayahuasca and it's like, yeah, you're a Hufflepuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, wait, what were we talking about before? Moose, Sorry. animals, spirit um, animals. B- before that. And then the oh, dragon. Oh. oh, well, also with snakes, that's like DNA, right? Mm. Yeah. That's totally. medicine. Mm. That's also your intestines. That's your, like, yeah, it's just, huh. yeah, it's your room. It's your, you know, it's health. It's um, it's flexibility. It's you well, know, it's mobility. Giver, it's the giver of forbidden knowledge, too. That's it goes true. back to the Garden of Eden and the, and the serpent offering, you yeah. know. That's true. Uh, knowledge of the unknown. Which yeah, why wouldn't it's you want to know? Infinity, right? You know. Yep. Who would want to stay in the uh, the unknowable? Who would want to well, stay? Well, but that that's the whole thing is that's when binary thought came to be. Yeah. Well, is when we took that bite and we went, oh, I'm different from this, which <clears> is different from that, and we started giving a language and name to everything, and that's what the fall is really. Yeah. About, totally. Is that we've. Which I mean, from the singular. God, that's that one story alone you can dissect mm. and analyze until the cows come home. But it, it it's so uh, such a strong motif. You know? But that's that the go ba- then back to like this like how we're interconnected and how we're not like that whole di- like you mentioned this before. When we're nine, we start to all of a sudden see how everyone sees us, 
and before totally. we're all just like we're here and I'm a kid and all, for some reason like around nine nine ten that's when like you just start the how what people think of you and how you're supposed to be and who you should be Ugh. that's why right. they say if you're kind of stuck what a burden what a burden if you're kind of stuck as an adult and and you're like what what do I want to do if you go back to like around nine eight what did you like to do then as mm-hmm. a kid touch back into that and maybe that's the answer to where if you're stuck now. Definitely like talking about Bigfoot and UFOs. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> also, if you're dealing with self-image issues, definitely come to Hollywood. <laughs> right, right. I know. Oh boy, oh boy. All right. I um, know, I know. Cool up. We have to move on. This okay. is awesome. We could actually talk to you for hours. For sure. Um, but we have a game we like to play. I think I know where you're going to mostly fall on this spectrum. It's called Bullshit. Okay. Or Believe It. Mm. I'm going to go down a list of things, uh, and this is our Halloween. It's more Halloween-themed this month, but you're going to say just bullshit if you're into it. Uh, or wait, bullshit wait. if... Sorry. <laughs> believe it if you're into it, or bullshit if you're not. Okay. Or if you don't believe it. Okay, okay. here we go. On your mark. Yeah. Get set. Okay. Ghosts. B- b- believe it. <laughs> UFOs. Believe it. <laughs> Bigfoot. Believe it. Angels. Believe it. Vampires. Believe it. Shadow people. Believe it. Loch Ness Monster. Believe it. Alien Greys. Believe it. Werewolves. Believe it. Parallel universes. Believe it. Zombies. Believe it. Shapeshifters. Believe it. Heaven. Uh, okay. Believe it. Hell. Believe it. Yeti. <laughs> believe it. The Mummy's Curse. Believe it. Astrology. Believe it. ESP. Believe it. Witches. Believe it. Demons. Believe it. Atlantis. Believe it. Mothman. I don't know, but probably. Believe it. Reincarnation. Believe it. The devil. An entity. Like, yes, believe it. The apocalypse. Believe it. Halloween. Yeah, it exists. <laughs> oh, <laughs> believe it. I, you did so well. I got to get in I there. I mean, literally, like, Bryce, we talked about everything my girl. Everything else. My girl right here. Bryce on the just gets really happy when someone just says, believe it to everything. I mean, <clears throat> I guess I don't know a lot about the Mothman, but I must, you know. Oh, you would believe it. You yeah. should get into it. You'd believe it. You would believe You'd be it. You'd into yeah. it. It's, it's some amazing. weird Because it's phenomenon. real and it really did happen. Um, uh, there's a movie. Before we move, yes. Yeah. Read the book, too. Uh, the movie's loosely based on the book. Uh, okay. Before we move on to our, the next half, or the end of the show, I guess, or the next segment, uh, we haven't really touched upon your self-proclaimed love for Bigfoot or Yeti. Can mm-hmm. you just give us a hot 30-second take <laughs> on Bigfoot and Yeti? I just have... I, I really like cryptozoology, and I really... I just think there is just stuff that we we don't know we still haven't explored all of the ocean we don't know things are st- there are still uh creatures being discovered in laos there are parts and places and we just don't there's just we don't know everything amen right. yeah couldn't agree more Done. all right we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back it's time for this week's story of high strangeness great i love it do it <laughs> All right, we're back with this week's guest, Kulap Vlaisak, and boy, oh boy. She scored 100 on the test. <laughs> we always say it's, there's Our no right guest. or wrong answers. No, she got them all right. <laughs> She's the only guest to ever have got them all right. Congratulations, I mean, Kulap. Thank you so much. But like yeah. when we talk about heaven, hell, the devil, like that doesn't, I mean, I wouldn't say necessarily as in judo Christian. Like a place. No, yeah. Yeah, okay. A place like, in the mind. Mm. An experience mm. on Earth. Sure. Yes. Amen. Got it. What are, how, What are your feelings on the the Loveland Frogman oh. from Ohio? I I don't know about it. He's a Good cryptid. thing it wasn't Weird in cryptid. there. A bunch of teenagers saw this life size frog dude walking around. Gulp. Back in the nineties, <laughs> sixties. Gulp. Mm, classic teens. <laughs> um, classic horny teens. Okay, Those here horny, we go. Sexy teens. Horny toad. So, mm. uh, we're doing Halloween themed stuff this week. So. Scary stories, vampires, ghosts, this, the the like. Um, last week, Bryce shared the story of a so-called imaginary ghost uh, named Philip. Um, and tonight's story is just as hauntingly scary, but it's all too real. Um, I recently got done watching season two of Mindhunter. Mm. I'm a little into true crime right now. Yeah. I'm a little bit in that. 
And this story is going to be a real gruesome, scary okay. one. Okay. And for those of you who are a little sensitive, I'm going to go easy on the gore, but this is probably the most violent story we've ever done on the show. Holy shit. All right. Because Whoa. Halloween brings haunted houses. And there is one house in the United States that's considered to be one of the most haunted houses. And that is the Velisca Axe Murder House. Never heard of it. So um, this uh, got a lot of my sources from the story from uh, Weird US, Atlas Obscura, Vice, uh, Wikipedia, and a handful of Google searches. Okay, so... On ni- at 9.30 p.m. on June 10th, 1912, in Villisca, Iowa, yeah. Josiah Moore, his wife Sarah Moore, and their uh, children uh, all came home from, uh, were walking home from a day at the children's program at the Presbyterian Church. Their four children, Herman, Mary Catherine, Arthur, and Paul, as well as Mary Catherine's two friends, Ina May and Lena Gertrude Stillinger. All haunted names. The Stillinger sisters had been invited over to the Moors for a sleepover because they were staying with their grandma, but they were too scared to walk home in the dark. Sarah Moore had helped organize this event at the Presbyterian Church, so they all had all gone to church that Sunday, and then they came home for lunch, hung out, then they went back around 8 p.m. for this Children's Day event. So um, this, uh, the Moore family were an affluent family. The, the house, their house itself, if you see it now, it's not very big. It's sort of an old-school kind of like prairie town, Edwardian-style house. Uh, so it wasn't necessarily big for the time, but it had three bedrooms in it. And um, he was a businessman, well-respected in town. Everybody knew him. So the Moors returned to their house, and this being 1912 in Iowa, of course, they left their front door unlocked when they went to church. And they settled down for the evening. People still do that in Iowa. Well, they might want to start changing their ways. <laughs> because at 7 a.m. the next morning... The Moore's neighbor, Mary Peckham, became concerned when the usually lively Moore house had not yet woken for them for their morning chores. She's hanging out the laundry at 5 a.m. <laughs> of course she is. Monday morning, we got to start bright and early. Baby. God bless those moms. And usually yes. the kids were all out. They had chickens, and there's usually a lot of activity over there. Yeah, stuff to do. The, yeah, stuff they don't to have do. iPhones, right? Yeah. The, no. the, the sun is waking yeah, them up, exactly. not the screens. There are roosters that have business to attend to. So Mary grew concerned. She walked over to the house, knocked, and was answered with an eerie silence. Mary tried opening the front door, but discovered it was now locked. So Mary let the chickens out of their coop and returned home to call Josiah's brother, Ross, who had a spare key to the house. So Ross arrives a little while later, knocks on the door. He calls to his brother. He calls out to Sarah and the kids. Nobody answers. And the windows are all drawn, and they look around. They realize that the curtains are all drawn, and that some of them are covered uh, by what they'll discover to be bed sheets. So he starts to freak out. He gets the <sighs> key. He goes inside. He walks into the house. And the first room he goes into is the guest room where Ina May and um, her sister uh, uh, Lena Gertrude Stillinger were, had been sleeping and discovers them brutally murdered in their bed so he rushes outside he phones down to joe's hardware store tells the guy there to get a hold of the local marshal he's just a peacekeeper in town this guy by the name of henry hank uh, horton so horton comes over and he discovers walks inside discovers that all the windows have been covered with either drapes or blankets and sheets from from inside the house all the mirrors have been covered with what they think were Sarah's clothing. Um, and he walks through the house to discover that Josiah, Sarah, and all six of their children, along with the Stillinger sisters, were all found in their beds, brutally murdered by an axe-wielding maniac. 
Their faces were all covered with cloths. Doctors would later claim the murders took place between midnight and 5 a.m. One theory is that the axe murderer used the sounds of a nearby passing train as cover to move about the house and conduct the slayings. Uh, they believe that the axe murderer, and they know that it was an, all done with an axe because the axe was left in the room with the Stillinger girls. So they believe that the murderer started in the master bedroom, killing Josiah using the blade of the axe. And this is really brutal. He cut him so badly that his eyes popped out of his head and were missing. And then he killed Sarah with the blunt end of the axe. And then he proceeded into the children's room, repeated that, murdered them with the blunt end of the axe, before returning back to the master bedroom and, and laying even more blows on Josiah and Sarah. So he went back, and there's this gruesome detail. When he went back into the house, he kicked over a shoe that had already filled with blood from the first uh, time he'd been in there. I told you guys, this is gruesome, scary, gory, horror story for Halloween. So, um... And then finally, this piece of shit goes downstairs, and that's when he killed the Stillinger sisters. And they found that there were gouge marks from the axe on the ceiling of the master bedroom, where but they were, and they knew that it was from the night of the murder because there was powder from the ceiling on the floor and on the bed, but it wasn't over where he had murdered so he was just walking through the house flinging this axe up over his head like just a total wild man yeah just crazy maniac so in the guest room where the Stillinger's sisters were found Lena was pulled slightly off the bed and looked like she had defensive wounds and they think that maybe she was the only one who woke up during the process um this is this is uh not cool Uh, trigger warning her undergarments had been removed tossed under the bed and her nightgown had been pushed up over her waist but later the coroner had said that there had been no evidence of any sexual assault and they think that he posed the girls this way to be provocative and disgusting and scary now maybe he uh, sick and twistedly got off on some of that uh, but they found no evidence of that Um, but next to the axe on, on the floor of the room they found a giant slab of bacon that he had taken out of the ice box and wrapped in cloth and put in the middle of the room. They also found um, a meal, an uneaten meal that he had prepared and set placed in the kitchen next to a bowl full of bloody water. Uh, bro. Yeah, dude. God, I know, dude. this is brutal. This is a scary, scary house. So Fuck. no one knew who performed this horrific act. Horton leaves to go get the coroner and get the rest of the authorities and the police force to come. And because it's 1912 and a small town, uh, somehow word got out over the phone lines. And literally the operators were calling businesses and telling people and calling homes and letting word just instantly spread because of the telephone that this had happened. So while Horton is away getting help and the bodies are still in the house, crowds of people come to the house and start walking through the house to take a look at the bodies. And people were taking things from the house. They say that somebody even collected a piece of Josiah's skull because there's just brain matter and blood everywhere. So they completely contaminate the crime scene. And they said that Horton comes back with the coroner and investigator. And as they're getting people out of the front door, more people are coming through the back door. Over, um, overall, more than 100 people tromped through the crime scene. And, Why? Well, because they just didn't have police procedures back then. It's 1912. Thick back then, would you do that? Or maybe they needed what, iPhones. Would you do I that? Mean, like, geez. well, you do that? That it was a small town. People were trying. He was a famous guy in town. People just wanted to go get a look for themselves and see what My was happening. God. This is before CNN. This is before true crime. So this also goes to show that we've had a fascination with true crime forever. Forever. Um, but they they uh, back then the way the police procedures and detective work was done. 
everything relied on eyewitness account. Right. This was one of the big problems with, uh, which only happened 10 years before, 20 years before, was with Jack Jack the Ripper cases. You know, fingerprinting was like a new thing. There obviously wasn't a lot of DNA. Uh, there was no such thing. I mean, as, I mean the there Sal- was the Salem witch trials. Were like, yeah. ah, she was naked yeah. in, yeah. Like, yeah. in a so, field. Uh, <laughs> like, that print- was her. Fingerprinting had become started to become a thing, but when you have a hundred people walking through the house, touching everything, you're fucked. Of course. So, yuck. Um. So, they uh, by the time the authorities got back, there had been over 100 people stomping through the crime scene. There was one additional really scary detail that when the investigator went in, they went up into the attic and found that there were cigarette butts up in the attic. And what they think was that the killer had come in while they were away at church, hid up in the attic and waited yeah. for the night for the family to go to bed at night no. and then creep down uh, sometime between midnight and 5 a.m., maybe when that train passed by. Um, Because they were near the train tracks, and there's a theory that I won't go super into, but um, later there's a book that's come out more recently that they think that the killer was a guy who was riding down this train line, this South Coast train line. What was it called? Southern something train line. I have to look it up. And Because there were other axe murders happening around this time all throughout the Midwest, Colorado, uh, Paola, uh, Kansas, uh, Oklahoma. And they were all, there's one theory that this guy was riding down the train and doing it because they were all tended to be families that were near train tracks. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Was was their house so close to the train tracks? The part where they none of them woke up is crazy to me. They were so close to the train tracks that the train that's itself one of the, was so well, that's loud. That's one of the mysteries of this whole thing is the family. It's kind of like the Amityville murders where right. the whole family was killed in their beds and no one was awake. No and one that, was awake. And in that one, I can't remember the name of the guy, but he went through and shot everybody with a shotgun. Yeah. And so some people think, I read that there's a theory that maybe the murder had drugged their food mm. um, so they didn't wake up. Uh, but it, it could have been that they were, I mean, uh, I grew up, and well, actually my sister's, one of my sister's house was near train uh, tracks when, um, and I've, you know, spent the night. There's real, they're loud. They're super loud. So it's possible. We just don't know. Um, but it also might explain an M.O. if this guy knew that the train, the moving train, could also be part of his cover. It might help get away with it. Right. This is all speculative. Um, and, you know, I haven't read that book. But um, so anyway, so they um, a few suspects were questioned, including a minister by the name of Reverend George Kelly. He had a history of sexual devi- deviancy that included peeping in windows and asking women to pose naked for him. Um, Kelly had apparently undergone some kind of mental breakdown when he was a teenager and was considered mentally ill. I don't know how he became a reverend. <laughs> uh, after the murders, he became fascinated with the case and started writing into the police department like true crime fanatic style. And he had was giving details and asking questions that they ultimately... Well, Ultimately, we're like, did he have something to do with this? Um, He was arrested in 1914, two years later, for sending uh, lewd material through the mail to a woman who had um, applied for a job as his secretary. So I think we're talking about Edwardian dick pics. Um, And then uh, after he was arrested for that, he spent time in the state mental hospital or a county mental hospital, one of the two, uh, and the nurses there and the doctors there were like, uh, this guy might be the axe murderer. So he was arrested in 1917 after a couple suspects led to to nothing. And he even confessed to the murder, quickly recanted. Uh, he was tried twice. The first time, I believe, was a hung jury. And then they tried him again and they quitted him because... People were like, this guy's so crazy, we can't believe anything he says. Also, he was a really short guy, and they didn't think he was tall enough to make the gouge marks in the ceiling oh, of the house. Interesting. Nor did they think that his small size would have been able to like overtake an entire family, family of eight people. So, um, so the short Beliska Axe Murder House stood empty for years. Uh, I mean, I think other people moved in, but more recently was empty, ultimately falling into near disrepair until in 1994 when a man by the name of Darwin Lynn bought the residence, 
uh, behind his wife's back. He didn't tell her that he was going to buy it. <laughs> and then he don't need re- to worry about that. He restored it to its original 1912 condition, renovated it. Um, so it took out all the electricity, uh, made out just a gas stove. The only thing that he put in there was a one uh, air conditioning window unit that ran out from an extension cord because otherwise it gets it would get really, really, really hot in there. Um, and he originally set it up as a true crime attraction to boost local tourist economy. Uh, but the house quickly became a destination for paranormal investigators and ghost hunters who have all reported over the years numerous strange phenomena, uh, including but not limited to orbs, uh, the sounds of dripping blood, intense uh, drops or increases in temperature, moving children's toys in the house, EVPs, the sounds of children crying, especially the sound of a little girl crying from inside one of the closets. Mm. They think that maybe... Mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 Lena hid in that closet during the murders. Um, there are also urban legends that if you look in the house at certain times of night, you can see the family in there. They say the upstairs of the house shifts. The, the images of the house itself seem to change upstairs and look different than they do. And the master bedroom is said to f- fill up with mist um, at at night, um, some eyewitness account ghost hunters said that the paranormal investigators saw the the place tr- fill up with this like black mist uh, in between the hours of twelve a.m. or and, and or twelve midnight and five a.m. Um, season uh, four, episode thirteen of Ghost Adventures was filmed at the uh, Felisca Axe Murder House which might be the most high-profile investigation to take place in the house, but certainly not the strangest. Um, So the house is actually open to the public, and for upwards of $420 a night, anybody can spend the night there. Oh, bro. Don't uh, do it. You'll get cursed. Do your own amateur... Uh, paranormal investigation people bring in crystals uh-uh. they bring in oh, uh, Ouija boards they bring in all their own uh, EVP equipment uh, on the night uh, of November 7th 2014 during a recreational paranormal investigation a man by the name of Robert, Robert Stephen Lauren Jr. 37 of Rhinelander Wisconsin split from his group of friends Went and went upstairs and was yeah. hanging out in the northwest bedroom. <laughs> now I don't know if this is one of the kids' bedrooms or the master bedroom. It's probably one of the kids' bedrooms um, because they don't specify it as being the master bedroom. Around twelve forty-five p.m., his friends found him in the room suffering from a self-inflicted stab wound to the chest. Oh man. He stabbed himself in the chest, and nobody knows why he did it. They rushed him to the hospital where he survived his self-inflicted stabbing, but then said to the press, out of respect for the Moore family, he refused to comment comment on it any further. And no one knows what drove him to do this. The house, dude. Wow. So uh, did they specify what kind of blade... Did he bring uh, I didn't it? see it. I, I assume it's something that he brought. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, nice. I should probably look that up. But <laughs> I just want to. I want to know if it was an axe. Was it a uh, kitchen knife? I want to know. Is axe a, is axe? The, was it a phantom axe? The axe still exists. It's in a museum in town. And Why? Some, sometimes people bring the axe from the museum. They're clearly very lackadaisical <laughs> about these rules. Yeah, they need stricter Back protocols. Back to the here. house to see what sort of evil dem- demonic energy it'll inspire in the house. No. Right. Uh-uh. That is too much. Um, there's Woo! a documentary filmmaker uh, named Kelly Rundle who made the movie um, Velisca, Living with a Mystery, and she stated there is a whole body, she told Vice... Uh, magazine there's a whole body of folklore surrounding the Moore murders and that in itself is fascinating so long as you keep in mind that it's folklore not fact so I just regard the paranormal sightings as a contemporary version of that it's an extension of the folklore that began on the day of the murders folklore can tell you more about how people see themselves and how they see the world 
than it does the facts surrounding the case. Mm. And that is the story of the Villisca Axe Murder House. Wow. Crazy shit. Great. Um, Kulop, what, what, what the is hell the, is that? What is the folklore that it was... Well, I think the folklore meaning that... Um, you know, there's all these different suspects surrounding it. It's a mystery. No one knows what happens. Okay, okay. You know, like one of the one of the suspects was actually um, there was like a uh, I think Josiah's brother in law threatened to murder him at some point, and they Ooh. questioned him, but he had an alibi. There was another. That's Ross. Is that his name? No, no, that was his brother. His brother in law. Oh, right. Um, and then there was like there was there was there was rumors that there was a. A uh, senator had sent like a cocaine fueled assassin to go kill. Like wow, all these stories okay. came up, but they uh, no, all the suspects led to nothing. Yeah, and then, the guy was long gone. And then the people that looked like this is our dude. There was one guy who rolled through town that night that they were like, "Oh, this guy's crazy and he's violent." And there was a detective by the name of Wilk- Wilkinson who was trying to build a case. He thought that he was, uh, this dude was, um, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, slipping slipping my brain, but uh, he was responsible for the axe murders in Colorado Springs and Paola that also had drapes over the mirrors and the windows covered some similar stuff. But the guy had an alibi that he was getting a paycheck at the time, like in a different town at the time of the murders. So they always had trouble. And then that guy sued that detective for like $2,000 in personal damages because, you know, but, right. right. But they, and then this other book um, by the guy who wrote Moneyball and his daughter wrote the book called the man from the train. And that's there. They think it's this other dude that was traveling the rail systems at that time. So it's just crazy. So there's all this mystery. There's all this, Stuff yeah. with people being like, it's haunted, it's a demonic place, it's an evil place. So it's, it's so just... funny. Why not raise it to the ground? Well, right. at one point they were going to, uh, they were going to burn it down, but um, I guess a governor. The Iowa governor came through town in the in the early nineties, and he was like, "You know, it's really good for uh, oh, local yeah. economies, tourism. tourism." And that's when the guy. <laughs> uh, I mean, it sounds Lynn, like it. Yeah. That's yeah. when that uh, guy was like, "Hey, I, why don't I buy this?" And save it as a historical, and now it's become like a historical landmark. Right? Yeah, yeah. people um, really like that kind of stuff. It's crazy. They sure do. Spend it's a, a lot spooky, of money. spooky, wow. horrible house of horrors. There was one detail I want to know more about. If you have any more tidbits about the freaking uh, bacon in the middle of the room? Well, all right, all this one's a little sick. So there was a theory that he put that there and used it as a quote unquote artificial vagina lubricant while oh, okay. he he was having sex with the Aren't bacon while staring asked? at the dead bodies of the girls because uh Ina was also she was facing the wall but her torso her lower half was twisted and her butt was exposed and he clearly did that to shock people. Oh, right. Um, but again, they like looked at this bacon. There was like, nobody's been fucking this bacon. So they don't know. It's just he did, had these weird little rituals. They this, weren't sure. And he covered all their faces, which they talk about on the new season of Mindhunters, like a way for the killer. Or I think it was that or it was maybe on. I may have heard this on last podcast, honestly, that it's a way of when people cover cover the mirrors and the windows It's and the victim's faces It's a way they don't want to be seen it's a way of them being unseen um after having done it so it's just silent weird it's just crazy crazy i have another question follow-up question Mm -hmm. were were there any like other cases of like axe murders that linked up with that one yeah yeah um that's the so wilkinson the detective was trying to pin it on this other guy because he was like this sounds similar to the ones that happened in colorado springs and paola right couldn't make that case and then this new book, The Man on the Train, puts together a lot of those cases. And they, that Gosh. family thinks that this this father and daughter um, think that they've solved it. But, of course, the guy who would be the killer is, like, long, long dead. Long dead. But, but this person, this suspect, um, they think was responsible for over 250 murders around mm-hmm. this time. Most of them were axe <laughs> murders. So, clearly... I this, mean, eight, eight in this house. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's... 
And there were families that were, of course, not white and went unreported. So uh, they think there were even more. Right, right. Um, there's like one, there's, there was one story in this book made on the train about an affluent um, African American gentleman who was like well known around town, written about in the paper a lot. And he was murdered. And they think he's connected. But one of the reasons that he his murder was written about was because he was kind of like a local celebrity. Mm. Um, but there were other families that they think went unreported because, and, they went through just all of these old they went over like a through a thousand newspaper articles at the time just trying to find all these reports of right. axe murders and they started to go hey it's all running along this train line that's running o- through the midwest and all these houses were near uh the train like the moore family's house so they think it's a guy who's just riding the rails and doing it i mean who knows you know that's they they haven't been able to prove it but um i don't know yeah it's pretty Wow. Scary, wow. true really crime, up, ghost, dog. serial killer story. Well, um, I hope you sleep well tonight. Yeah, everybody. check your addicts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cool up. Yeah, Any yeah. final thoughts on the House of Horrors? All three of you are walking me, me to my car. <laughs> Absolutely. We're, the, every, we're checking the trunk. We're underneath. We're looking at the sides. We'll get our flashlights <laughs> out. <laughs> Is true crime something that, you know, we don't really go into too much here, but this one, of course, is like, feels appropriate for the season. And obviously, you know, this is a horrible thing. Real people died. Um, but because it happened so long ago, I think I'm I'm better at carp, carp, uh, compartmentalizing it, which I know isn't great, but. Man. And you're like, because there was an orb, we can share it here. <laughs> <laughs> right. A single a big orb. Big destination. It's considered one of the most haunted houses in America. Yeah. You know, you, you, you just uh, there's a you 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 just have to wonder: is it does it like does trauma leave an imprint on a place or on a time? Certainly uh, on a person. Certainly yeah. on it. Yeah, no <laughs> yeah. doubt about it. You know, I mean, do these do these sort of recreational visitors bring their own sort of uh, latent psych- psychical phenomena to the property? Um, you Further know. contaminating it. Yeah, or or causing well, these strange ta- things. What we're talking about is. Or sacrifices, right? To, to like that in this home. Let's go down that route. That mm. this violence and the sacrifice to, uh, created a dark force. There's a remained, ritual to it that remained in the home. Yeah, and you know, people can bring their own latent psychic abilities to a to a place or a time and and, and cause sort of par- paranormal phenomena to well, occur. Well, certainly, there was no indication that this was an unhappy home before this happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? So or, I would say it was a invasion of that home and yeah. that invasion left its mark. Yeah, it left there. its mark. Yeah, I'd, or 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 the uh the spirits of those people have decided to use their post life energy to you know corrupt or, and uh and haunt this place uh the book is Who called knows? the man from the train 2017 so it's recent written by bill james and his daughter rachel McCar- uh, mccarthy james so i'll throw up, throw up a bunch of links to mm-hmm. all this stuff if you're if you're into it want to check it out but mm. uh spooky stuff cool up <laughs> yes where can people Find your work. Oh, well, you can, f- let's see, uh, uh, just IMDB me. Cool. <laughs> right. Do it. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, let's see, what you can find me um, on Twitter at Coolop, on Instagram at I am Coolop. Uh, I got a website, coolopvlisock.com. Um, Where can we watch latest season yes, of Bajillion Dollar watching. Properties? Bajillion Dollar Properties, you can s- watch it for free on Pluto TV, Sweet. on demand, also on their Funny AF channel. Um, you can also uh, get it on Amazon, rent it on Amazon, rent it on uh, Prime. Great. Uh, wait, no, sorry, Amazon and also on iTunes. Great. And Origin Story? Amazon Prime and on iTunes. I'm Fantastic. all over that. Um, guys, uh, I have a plug, if I may. The new season of Robot Chicken is airing right oh, now, yeah, which I wrote dude, on that's season awesome. 10. Very cool. Um, my stuff is in the back half of the season, so specifically episodes 9 through 12 I wrote on, and I do some voices on it uh, this season as check well. Check it so out. Please check that out. Fun. Bryce's Secret Project, probably happening in November. Yep. Maybe by the time you're hearing this, we've announced it. God, wouldn't that be nice? I said airing. <laughs> Can I say airing? Can we uh, say what it is? No, not yet. I mean, no. Can we say what format it is? No. Can we say it's a movie? No. no. Can we say it's another podcast? No, it's certainly not another podcast. <laughs> You're already roped in one. <laughs> no. All yes. right, fair enough. Grace Mitchell, any new music you want to plug? Um, I'm working on a record right now, and Great. it's going to be. Uh, it's very, it's very good. 
Um, I'm excited to finish it. It's been a long time coming. So Dope. Congrats. That's, yeah. that's sweet. Congratulations. Thanks. And of course, people can find you on Instagram. Yeah, and- at Grace Mitchell. You can look at me on Twitter. I'm at Grace Mitchell. Um, you can look at my Wikipedia page. Uh, no, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Instagram and Twitter is like where I'm most active. I don't Fantastic. have Facebook. So. Well, thank you so much yeah, for filling in for Riley Yeah, thank you for spilling in for Riley. He... R.I.P. No, we just kidding. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> um, everybody listening, please do us a favor. Go to uh, Apple Podcasts, rate, review, subscribe. Uh, it really, really helps get the show to more people. We'd appreciate that. And uh, until next week, I remain Michael McMillan for Bryce Johnson, Riley Bray, and Grace Mitchell. Uh, thanks again to Cool Out for being here. And until... Wait, so are you, is there a chance some week that you will not remain who you are? I, that's just what they say. Good until question. then, I remain. I mean, who knows? We're talking about personal transformation. <sighs> All right. I might be half not guy. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you know what to do. Yeah. Good night. Child. <laughs> Good night. And uh, if you want to talk about regression, come meet me by the Orange Julius. Oh! Hot. <laughs> Go. With that price. Get back in your car as fast as you can and drive away. <laughs> Go get regressed. Bye, guys. Later. Bigfoot Collectors Club is produced by Riley Bray. Our theme song is Come Alone by Sun Eaters, courtesy of Lotus Pool Records. If you like the show, please rate and review us on iTunes. It really helps get the podcast to more listeners. To support the show, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash Bigfoot Collectors Club and unlock multiple reward episodes every month.